Good evening, everyone. I warmly welcome you to our cell talk webinar. In today's session, Dr. Nupur Vissals will be presenting research titled Identification of Candidate Parkinson's Disease Genes by Integrating Genome Wide Association Study, Expression, and Epigenetic Data Sets. Dr. Nupur Vissals is working as a senior bioinformatics scientist at Brenix. She is working on bioinformatics and other multiple projects as well. Some of her projects include designing personalized neoantigen vaccines for cancer patients and exploring the genes behind Chordoma and the health applications of digital healthcare wearables. Nupur has a doctoral degree in physics and her research work focuses on studies of confined polymers. Before joining Renix, she worked at the Indian Institute of Science Raman Research Institute Collaboratory and the Indian Institute of Chemical Bio Biology. At Renix, she has gained experience as not only a research mentor, but as a scientist contributing to various international publications. So without further ado, I now welcome Nupur to take the floor. Thank you, Aditi, for your nice introduction. Welcome, everybody. Today, I am going to talk about a research article, which is published by Demis Akia et al. And this research article has there's the title, Identification of Candidate Parkinson Disease Genes by Integrating Genome-Wide Association Study Expression and Epigenetic Datasets. So the research article is about Parkinson disease. It is published in the, it was published in the journal JAMA Neurology in the year 2021. This journal has an impact factor of 29.9 and Although the article is about Parkinson's disease, this article has a broad impact on other diseases like the neuro other neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. And since it, it is focused on the integrating genomic data, integrated analysis of genomic data, it is also, this methodology is also applicable to other genetic diseases. The Parkinson disease. The article is concerned about the Parkinson disease. It is a brain disorder observed mostly in the elder, among the elderly people, and more importantly, it is observed mostly in men. And the symptoms include tremor in different body parts like hands, limbs, jaw. It, muscle stiffness, slowness of movement is are also observed. The slowness of movement is often called as bradykinesia. These symptoms are also accompanied with the loss of balance, which may lead to the fall of the patients and cause other injuries. Apart from these symptoms, some non-motor symptoms are also observed often, very often, which include sleep problem, fatigue. Parkinson's disease is definitely a disease of concern because more than 10 million people are affected globally. The disease Parkinson's is actually caused by the neuron cells, not cells or neurons. In our brain, there is a region, basal ganglia, that when the neurons of this particular region become impaired or fail to function properly, Parkinson's disease occurs. The neurons of this region actually produces a special type of molecule, dopamine. Dopamine acts as a neurotransmitter. It maintains communication between the neurons, between neurons and the brain and body parts. So when this nerve cells of these regions fail to operate properly, the dopamine production reduces. This loss of dopamine then causes a Parkinson disease. Apart from the loss of dopamine, there is another feature associated with the Parkinson, that is presence of Lewy bodies in the PD affected brains. Lewy bodies are unusual clamps of protein alpha cyanide. It is also observed in the Parkinson disease patient's brain. Now, the challenge is, of course, the major challenge is that the disease is still not completely curable. Well, all the research is going on. on, on. The reason it is not curable because the cause of the inactiveness of neuron is not clear. 
Yeah. So the current trip, that's why the current trip includes this includes basically to enhance the level to increase the level of dopamine mind by using drugs like levodopa, carbidopa. Dopamine cannot be directly administered to the patients because it cannot reach the brain because of some blood brain barrier it faces. That's why levodopa is used. Levodopa reaches the brain and then produces dopamine. And carbidopa helps the levodopa to reach at the brain. Parkinson's disease is mostly sporadic type, but in few cases, in some fractions of patients are observed with familial Parkinson's disease, which is caused by mutation of certain genes. Yes. And although the molecular mechanism underlying the neuronal degeneration is still not clear, but it is being it is being noted that the Genetic factors are playing an important role behind this disease. disease. And already almost 40 loci has been identified associated with the Parkinson disease disease. Apart from fertilizer, some specific genes are also being identified. But still, the causal genes corresponding to each locus and their roles in Parkinson disease are not clear. With these challenges, this, the current research article sets their objective to investigate what genes and genomic processes underlie the risk of sporadic Parkinson disease. To explore this issue, the researchers have followed some methodologies. One of them is genome-wide association studies, GWAS. It identifies genetic variants associated with a particular disease among a group of patients. What it does basically, it studies genomes of a large group of people. This group of people includes individuals with disease and individuals without disease. It studies the genomes of this, those, both the groups and identified SNPs, that's the single nucleotide polypharmacy. And it detects the frequency of the SNPs in both the subgroup of patients, first group, group of individuals. If some SNP, like here in this picture in SNP3, is observed more frequent among the individual with disease, then SNP3 is associated with the Parkinson's disease or the disease of the concern. So GWAS gives us the SNPs associated with the disease. Apart from GWAS, researchers have used other methodologies like QTL, quantitative trait loci. QTL refers to a specific genomic region, region with a particular phenotypic trait or characteristics or feature. It basically links between phenotype and genotype. An expression quantitative trait loci is a type of QTL where the locus explains the variation of the mRNA expressions. To integrate GWAS and the QTL data research has been its co-localization study. Co-localization means it tests whether two independent, whether two traits share some share same causal variants. If two traits share same causal variants, then they are called co-localized. Nice. And then they further did the transcriptome white and association studies KWS or GWAS. It is basically integration of GWAS with the expression data. It probes association between gene expression and complex diseases or traits. Yes. And with this methodologies, they applied on data collected from different databases, which include International Parkinson's Disease Genomic Consortium, which provided GWAS data. UK Brain Expression Consortium data set, genomic tissue expression, GTEx data set are also used. These two data sets provide data from different regions of the brains. And they also, the researchers also use methylation data taken from the Parkinson's disease UK Brain Bank. Before going to the result, they, experiment, they explored first for the possibility of the study the possibility of relating the expressions, changing expression of the genes with the Parkinson's disease risk factors. 
to explore the scope of this study, they check the how many genes are expressed where. For that thing, the, they already they have the information of the SNPs related to the Parkinson disease from the GWAS data. Around that SNP region, one MB upstream and downstream, downstream, they identified the presence of the genes. They are found there are around 515 genes are within that region around 1 MB of the SNPs. From these 515 genes, they observed 470 are expressed. They continued their study with these genes. And they performed color analysis and found that nine genes from the brain data and 27 from the DTX data showed strong evidence of co localization. Parallelly, they did TW was, was study, which identified 61 genes. And among these two parallel studies, they found five genes are common, which are then listed here in this table. So the genes associated with Parkinson's disease disease due to expression genes are, are five in numbers. They further checked how the genes associated with Parkinson's disease are due to the splicing change. From there, they used the exon level splicing data and identified 15 genes. And they also did TWS analysis here, which showed 129 genes had evidence for splicing in at least one isoform. Out of these 40 genes are within the region of concern. And among these two analyses, they found six genes which are common. So they got five genes from the expression analysis and six genes from splicing analysis. This total 11 genes they consider as a candidate genes and proceeded for further analysis. Further analysis used identification of the methylation change. They observed that they investigated whether the genes associated with the Parkinson disease are expression of splicing changes could be acting through regulation of methylation. They identified around 160 CPD sites which are prone to methylation in the substantia nigra region, which is the region causing the responsible for the Parkinson's disease. And among the studies, three genes overlapped with the expression and splicing analysis. These three genes are here, GPNMB, TME, M163, and CTSP. Then they did the study on cell type specificity specificity, which means they wanted to explore whether genes expressed in the, whether these candidate genes are expressed in a particular type of gene brain area, but there is no specificity observed. Like the CD38 gene, it is mostly observed expressed in the astrocyte region, but other genes are not so much populated in the astrocyte region. Although no single cell type did not dominate, but they observed overall glial cell type dominates over the neurons. Glial cells include astrocytes, microglia, and oligodendrocytes. So these cell types dominate over for, the, for all the candidate genes over the neuron regions, neuron cells. And then they further did WGC and NA result that is weighted gene correlation network analysis. And they identified these three genes which are most relevant. With these candidate genes, then they went for the network analysis. First, they also involved the Mendelian proteins or Mendelian genes associated with the Parkinson's disease. This network is which combined those two types of genes along with the interactors are also considered. The green circuits are the whole of proteins that is the can is the include the candidate genes and the Mendelian proteins are here. So there is a strong network between the Mendelian proteins and the, their newly identified candidate genes, which indicates that the disease there exists a disease-specific interaction between candidate genes with the known risk genes. They further did the pathway analysis, pathway enrichment analysis to validate the biological role of these genes. The yellow colored genes were considered for the pathway analysis, and they observed that ERPV signaling pathway comes as the most significant path in the enrichment analysis. And this enrichment and this pathways obtained through the enrichment analysis are mostly populated by the genes 
mostly enriched by the genes like which are shown here in the pink color. So overall, there exists a set of genes which are playing a crucial role behind the disease. So the, in the discussion, the engine what we observed that they integrated EQPL data, that is expression quantity heterocyte data and GWAS data. And they obtained 11 candidate genes where genes are associated with gene expression regulations, genes associated with alternative splicing, and genes associated with methylation regulation. They further validated the biological roles of the genes, like CD38, it showed enrichment in the aspicide region, and also it is known that it regulates the neuroinflammation. Inflammation. And similarly, CTS begins here linked to the lysosomal storage disorders, CPN, MV, and UPLT have strong evidence in connecting Mendelian disease. And WGC and, and analyze, identity analysis identified three genes. So overall, we can see that there exists a group of genes and proteins in which includes the candidate genes as well as the Mendelian um, genes related to the Parkinson's disease, which are associated with the ERDB signaling pathways. And this group of genes increases the risk of developing sporadic and as well as the familial Parkinson disease. With this data, the researchers conclude that combination of GWAS and QTL data helps to discover 11 new candidate genes whose changes in expression, splicing, and methylation are associated with the risk of feeding. And the protein protein interaction analysis, network analysis highlight the functional pathways and cell types where these genes have important roles. So the research has leaves in impact, impact on the integrated analysis of GWAS and QPL data. Although this is this research article is not the first kind of paper which have done this type of integrated analysis, but this is important in the context of Parkinson disease as it identifies hitherto unknown risk genes. And those genes are also validated by their biological functions. With these things, I will stop now. And I thank all of you for your kind attention. If you are further interested, you can reach me at Nupu at direct Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nupur, for today's webinar. That was very, very enlightening. I see a few uh, questions in the chat box. Uh, Vijay asks, do these candidate gene functions overlap with any current theory for Parkinson's disease pathogenesis? Well, to explore this question, they, that's why they build the network analysis with the known Mendelian genes. These genes, like SNCA, PRK2, and then DJC13, PINK1, PINK1, these are already known Parkinson disease genes. So the new genes have strong interaction with the existing genes. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Vijay. Yes, uh, yes. Yogita also has a question. question. She asks, is genetic analysis currently utilizing in neurodegenerative disease like PD? Sorry, can you repeat it? Sure. Is genetic analysis currently utilizing in neurodegenerative disease like Parkinson's disease? This research article is about the genetic analysis of the Parkinson's disease. Now, you may ask the next question whether this is translated to the clinical practices. That is still not much done, I would think so because mostly the treatment is still dependent on the dopamine treatment based on the enhancing dopamine level which is the drugs like levodopa. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Yogita. Uh, Bharati asks, what are quantitative trait loci? Okay, okay. Quantitative trait loci actually refers to a locus specific genomic region which is responsible for the variation of a quantitative trait or basically a phenotypic feature. Suppose a phenotypic feature we are concerning 
gift your to refers to the specific genomic region which is responsible for that phenotypic feature. So QTL provides a genomic information which is linked to the phenotypic feature. I hope that answers your question, Bharati. Mayer uh, also has a question. He asks, can the identification of these genes help us diagnose individuals who are at risk of developing Parkinson's disease later in their lives? Yeah, hopefully so. That's the part one purpose of the goal, to identify the risk factors because of the Parkinson's disease, the genetic risk factors. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Namir. Uh, Shaheen too had a question and she asks, what are ERBB signaling pathways? Well, well ERBB signaling pathways. ERBB signaling pathways has a broad throat in the disease, in the biological processes. ERBB is a kinase molecule, it's a type of kinase molecule which is involved in the cell growth and cell survival. That's why it is important in case of Parkinson's disease because in case of Parkinson's, the neurons often cells of its die out actually. That's why its appearance is important here. I hope that answers your question, Shaheen. Uh, I see no other questions in the chat box and in the question answer uh, panel as well. So with this, I thank you again, Nupur, for today's session. And so in closing this webinar, I would also like to inform the audience of our next Cell Talk webinar that will be held on the 25th of October, 2022. And Mr. Numair Arshad will be presenting on the topic, efficacy and safety of GB1001 in patients with moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease already receiving Donapazil, a phase two randomized double blind placebo controlled multi-center clinical trial. So thank you so much everyone for your presence today. And we hope to see you this time next week as well. Wishing you a great week ahead. Good night.